Hello everyone, I'm going to record this informal tutorial to address what has uh, emerged as an issue with the Social Engineering Toolkit. Uh, I was actually really kind of sad to find out that the Social Engineering Toolkit was having issues because it is one of the coolest labs we do in this class. Um, but thankfully, there is a fix. Um, this fix actually requires you to go in and do some recoding of the Social Engineering Toolkit application. Um, that sounds kind of intimidating, but in reality, it's really not that hard. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I encourage you to give it a shot. Um, if you're worried about messing something up because you, uh, you know, are actually recoding this application, uh, you could do this in live um, instead of going into persistence and any changes you make will just be, um, you know, eliminated when you reboot or erased when you reboot. So, um, however, you know, you do have to keep a couple things in mind. So first, you got to make sure that you are online. And so you can kind of see on my, my screen here that, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm online up here. Boom, boom. Got to make sure you're online. Uh, another thing, you have to actually create the root account in Kali Linux for module three. And so if you remember for module three, that is all the way down here in these instructions right here. One more step. You actually have to create this root account. Um, to be able to uh, get this to work. So go back to module three if you haven't done it already, create this root account. Um, and then after you create this root account, you gotta remember to log into it. So you go up here to the little left-hand corner where the Kali Dragon is, and you'll have the option to log out um, and log back in again as a different user. Just remember your username after you create the root account, your username will be root instead of the default as Kali. All right, so back to the, the fix. So as we found out, Social Engineering Toolkit is uh, is broken. And what happens when you run through the instructions, everything works up until about right here. Um, the Social Engineering Toolkit breaks. And instead of returning your password and username, it returns this mess of stuff right here. Um, so it doesn't work. Um, and big bummer. But again, there, there luckily, uh, there, there is a fix and it's not especially difficult. And so I had sent out the link um, in an announcement earlier um, for how to fix this. And uh, I don't, um, the, the instructions are a little, little confusing. Um, and, uh, uh, but um, again, I'm going to, I'm going to show you here how to make that change. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go up into this white folder here. I'm going to open this folder up and you can see this is, uh, you know, your, your root directory, all your files, all your folders, everything is, is right here. And so we're going to type in from those instructions, we're going to type in a different directory. And essentially each one of these things I'm typing here is a folder. So, you know, USR is a folder you could click through and find. You don't actually have to type this. You could do this manually, but typing it's pretty easy. So we're going to do USR for slash share for slash set for slash src slash web attack and you can see it knows what we want so it's it's helping us out and pre-filling stuff harvester and then harvester py for for python code and when you hit enter that will open and so what you're looking at here is you're looking at the actual code from the social engineering toolkit application so this is the code that runs when you run that tool. And that's one of the cool things about working with open source is that you can get in here, you could change it. If you felt so inclined, you could read all this stuff and you could start figuring out how this tool works. Um, but you know, we're obviously not going to dive into that uh, uh, for this portion here. We're just, I'm just going to show you how to fix this issue. And it is really simple. We're just going to add a few lines of code. So up here at the very top, right under where it says import CGI, right there, we're going to add a line. So we're going to hit return and we're going to write import space HTML. Boom. Okay. And then we have one more change to make. And so we're going to do control F, which brings up find. So that's where, you know, we can just like in a normal computer, you can type something in to, uh, to find it. And um, we're going to type CGI dot escape. And it's right there. You can see that little line is right here. And so we're gonna be very careful here because this code has to be modified perfectly. But all you're going to do is change the CGI.escape. We're gonna erase those three characters and we're gonna write HTML escape. And that is it. So we're gonna close this out. We're going to save this, which that's why you have to be in a root account. If you're not in a root account, that file will not save. 
All right, so we've made the modification to code. So let's go back out to the social engineering toolkit. And uh, I'm gonna close this out and I'm just gonna open up a fresh Kali um, terminal window. And you'll see if you're in the root account, it's gonna look a little different. It's gonna say root at Kali. You're not gonna have to do, you know, sudo bash to get into that. It's just gonna automatically be in root. And it's also gonna call this a shell. Um, and you're, you, you wouldn't see that when you're using a normal user. And so that's a two good signals that you're in the right, the right account. And so we're just gonna do SE toolkit. We're gonna launch it. All right, um, so I didn't get the prompt because I've, I've run it on here before, so I didn't get the prompt where I had to agree to not do evil things. Um, so instead, I'm just right into the tool. We're going to go to one, social engineering attacks. We're going to go to two, website attack vectors. And we're doing the credential harvester attack. And we are going to do the site cloner. All right, so we're back into um, the instructions for our social engineering toolkit that are online. Um, and so you'll see the IP address for the post back. I can see 172.16.42.9 is actually is my, my private IP address. So I will hit return to acknowledge that. And now we're gonna enter the URL to clone. And so I would recommend this because it's easier. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do, we're gonna attack campus net just like from the instructions. So we can copy that. Let's just um, validate that we are online. All right, so that is the campus net logon that you are all familiar with being students at CSU. So we will go back to our terminal. That is going to be the site we will clone. So we will go ahead and paste this in. Okay, all right, it's cloning. So social engineering toolkit is running on that site. And so we're gonna go back and we're gonna grab the post back, which is the IP address, which is my private IP address and is the IP address I said I wanted data sent to. And I'm going to go copy selection. And then we're going to paste that in. And you will see that I have cloned CampusNet. So this is not actual CampusNet. This is a fake website. Um, looks identical to the real website. Um, however, it is actually tied to my private IP address. And so I'm going to type in my login ID, which we know is a seven character uh, number. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then for password, I'm just gonna say Witten test. And then I'm gonna say login. All right, so what happened? Oh, it blanked out. It went back to real campus net. And so my fake website just flickered for a second and went back to real campus net where I could actually log in with my login ID and password and go about my business in campus net and probably be none the wiser that my password had just been stolen. So here, back to social engineering toolkit. Instead of after the changes we made to the software, instead of that massive ugly text we had, we have a one user, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we have a password, wit and test. Stolen, set right back to social engineering toolkit. And that my friends, is how we fix the social engineering toolkit. Um, again, it involves some coding, but I think you'll see it's really easy and it's really fun. And I encourage everyone to go ahead and give it a shot. This tutorial was prepared by the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection at Cleveland Marshall College of Law, Cleveland State University.